Hello and welcome to the podcast, Every Moment is Sacred, where we interweave meditation and healing into everyday life. I am your host, Rain Elizabeth Stickney. Now, let us begin. Hey, happy new year. Happy 2024. I'm so happy we have made it here today together. Thank you so much for making this show possible. This podcast is entirely supported by you, and I cannot thank you enough. Thank you for being here and listening and rating and reviewing and sharing. It's just such a joy to have this podcast, Every Moment is Sacred, work out. And we're holding steady in the top 5% globally. And the only way that happens is that you're listening. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. As a gift, I would love to offer you something for the new year to take you all the way through in a good way. One of the things that I would like to offer is a freebie, which is only being offered through this specific episode. So you have to listen to this one to hear about it. I'm not going to announce it on social media or an email list or anything like this. This is only for you, for my listeners, for you who are listening, for you with your earbuds in, for you driving your car and listening while you're driving, for you who are listening on a speaker someplace. However, you get these words into your body, mind, soul. Thank you. I am going to read a poem to you called Treasure, and it is one of my mother's poems. This is the year 2024 that her poetry will be published into a book and into an audiobook, so you will be able to hold her words in your hands or listen to them all at once in book form by the end of the year. I'm so excited about this. And one by one, I'll continue to share her poems with you. This one is called Treasure. And the free gift of thanks, my gratitude to you is, I'm happy to provide this poem in print in a PDF printable form that you can download and use as you may enjoy, read again and again and again, because it has the perfect New Year's reflections in it. This poem is called Treasure, and all you need to do to get it is write an email to me, and my email address is healing at rainelizabeth.org. And I'll send you the PDF of the poem, and then you have it for keeps. You will also receive a coupon with that poem for when the book comes out, you'll have a special way to purchase. So this is my gift to you. My thanks for listening. My thanks for popping in or coming back every time, whatever the case may be. Your presence here is so valuable. And If you would like to engage with me more and have another kind of an offer that you buy into, I'm happy to provide that too. It's you listeners and my clients, my meditation students, the people who share gratitude with me that keep this show going because where it is totally free content, you can listen to your heart's content. There are overhead costs of technology and whatnot in producing this show. So a portion of the money that I make through my business, Rain Elizabeth Healing Arts, supports this show. And one of the ways that I make my money is through offering a gratitude practice called Redwoods and Snow. It is a daily email list 
The emails just pop into your inbox, usually in the morning. Every once in a while, I send out a late email and it could come in the afternoon or the evening, but it does come every day and I haven't ever skipped a day. This is the fifth round of this practice and I am offering you 20% off with the code podcast. Go to rainelizabeth.org slash redwoods hyphen snow rainelizabeth.org slash redwoods hyphen snow and register there. Use the code podcast for 20% off and then you get to share gratitude with me for the entire year. The emails between you and me are confidential. So those on the list have the opportunity to share their gratitude back with me. And then I respond again, and that creates a loop of connection. So you know that your grateful heart is landing someplace soft and open and loving and accepting. The gratitude practice teaches people to feel grateful every day of their lives. And the people who graduate from this practice are feeling complete with it because they have a gratitude practice. They used this opportunity as gentle accountability to find gratitude in their daily life. This is the whole premise of this show. Every moment is sacred. It is created for the purpose of finding healing and meditation in everyday life. Gratitude is a part of that practice of finding every moment to be sacred. Creativity and storytelling, poetry, these are all parts of the practice of being present in one's daily life and really sinking into the gratitude of being true to oneself, receiving the gifts of the earth, finding gifts of gratitude in relationship wherever it might be in the taste of food in pure clean water in one tiny raindrop on a dry dry day we can find the good together and i invite you in closer and closer to practice with me in all the ways that feel good to you Throughout this year, I will be adding in some parenting tips and tricks. I am a parenting coach as well as a spiritual counselor, a healer, body worker. I am a meditation teacher. I work with couples. I work with individuals. I love leading groups. And I hope to meet you all in person one day as well. Online is wonderful. In person is wonderful. However, it comes, I'm so happy you're here. In the new year, I love to reflect on the year that has passed and look forward into the year that is blooming and blossoming and coming my way. Here are some reflection questions What is being let? go of? What am I letting go of? What are you letting go of? I find that I am letting go of worry for others. Worry is a wonderful, helpful signal that says, I care. I care about something. I care about someone. And what I am letting go of is the worry part while embracing, embodying, and moving forward into the care. The caring act could be anything from a kind gesture to a kind word, to a special prayer, to offering money to a person or situation who needs it, to giving a hug, to lending a listening ear. The care is real and tangible. It could be the research on a specific topic that needs healing. There are lots and lots and lots of ways to care. The worry is a more internal agitated state, at least it is for me. And so what I am letting go of on this first day of 2024 is the worry that I sometimes feel for other people. 
And in that letting go, I am embracing and embodying care and the act of caring and the moving forward into giving love and care in a way that is felt by the other, by the one that I was originally feeling worry about. What is being welcomed in? What am I welcoming into my life? What are you welcoming into your life? This year, I am welcoming in more joy. I am already a pretty joyful person, so I am happy and grateful for that. And I'm welcoming in more joy, that full embodiment of joy where I get to feel my joy through and through in every cell. I mean, why not? If joy is infinite and eternal, let's try it out. Let's check. Let's do a joy test. How much joy is a person willing to feel? How much joy am I willing to feel? So 2024 is a joyful year for me. And I am lovingly welcoming in more joy. What would I like to learn more about? There are so many things. And for those of you who know something about my story, my life story through this world, you already know that I have a son with a rare genetic disorder And that is sometimes an invisible disability for him. And sometimes it's a more obvious disability or a health concern that we need to figure out. You can tell this might be where some of my worry goes, at least occasionally. So I do want to learn more about Bardet Beetle syndrome, which is what my son has. And there are things that happen because of that syndrome that involve his eyesight, involves his internal organs. It, it, it makes me stutter because when I imagine into his body, Bardet Beetle syndrome creates a cellular interaction that's challenging, just more challenging than for another person because it is the ciliopathy, meaning that the cilia of the cells are not formed ideally. They're just formed differently and the cells have a harder time communicating. So as a healer, I'm very interested in, wait a second, let's get down to the microbiology of what cilia is and how do we heal it? And when there's a genetic cause, what do we do about it? How do we love that person so fully and completely that they get to have their full life here on this earth in a good way for them, providing their light and love the way that they want and need to provide it? And without going into all the other many things I would love to learn about, this is one of them. Barde Beetle syndrome and all of the nuances in that genetic difference. What question do you have for me? What question do you have for yourself? What open-ended question? I encourage you to find a who, what, where, how question. I encourage you not to do a why, which is so funny for me to say because in all of this business and podcast coaching and learning and classes I've taken in the last year or so, there's this huge emphasis on finding out your why and sticking to your why. And I get the logic of that. But I come from a different background. I don't come from a business background. I can learn about so many things, but where I come from is someplace in the heart. I love psychology, spirituality, healing, health, holistic visions of being in this world. I love somatics. I love so many things that show me that from these perspectives, if we go too far into the why, we end up in a cul-de-sac and kind of a spinning way of thinking. And we can ask why for a very, very long time. I find the more interesting questions are the open-ended questions of who, what, where, 
how, when, when, when did you last feel joy? When did you last let go of something that really benefited you? When did you last learn something that gave you a sense of completion and satisfaction and knowledge? I challenge you to find your own open-ended question or ask any of mine or answer any of mine. If you have an open-ended question that you would like to offer me, find me on Instagram. That's actually my favorite social media platform. I have the most fun there and the others I enjoy as well in different ways, but I find Instagram super fun. So find me there at pictures underscore of underscore presence at pictures of presence. And let me know what your open-ended question is for yourself or for me or for the world. It's time for the poem. It's time for treasure. It's time to sit back, relax, receive a little poetry, consider what do these words have to do with your life? What do these words have to do with who you are and what you have experienced so far in this great world? What does this poem have to do with where you're going. How do these words land for you? Treasure. I always carry with me a little mountain box. I open it, smell pines, hear my mountain mother sing with my father stars. I open it, see the gentle deer, the sun shimmer on furs. Dragonflies dance in wild mountain lilies. I open it, laugh with the river, watch life pass in clear wind. Here, the eagle's breath is mine. I dive and fall with snow, softly swirling, deepening, disappearing. Returning, returning. On this box there is no latch. It is weightless and opens with one breath. One more time. Treasure. I always carry with me a little mountain box. I open it, smell pines, hear my mountain mother sing with my father stars. I open it, see the gentle deer, the sun shimmer on furs, dragonflies dance in wild mountain lilies. I open it, laugh with the river, watch life pass in clear wind. Here the eagle's breath is mine. I dive and fall with snow, softly swirling, deepening, disappearing, returning, returning. On this box there is no latch, it is weightless, and opens with one breath.
Leslie Lane Russell. Thank you so much for listening. It has been a great joy to have your presence here in this podcast. I welcome you to celebrate the joy and wisdom in your life exactly as it is. And I welcome you to feel loved, fully loved, exactly as you are. www.rainelizabeth.org